after Kamen Rider's stronger ended in 1975, Kamen Rider as a franchise took a four-year hiatus before coming back strong with a reboot series in 1979 titled Kamen Rider, or New Kamen Rider. The show featured the titular New Kamen Rider, who fights a new version of Shocker called Neo Shocker to harken back to basics of the original Rider show. This reboot idea would later get reversed, as halfway through, the show would get retooled with a new production staff who decided to bring in past Kamen Riders like Stronger, V3, Rider Man X, and the second Kamen Rider as reoccurring supporting characters, with Amazon and the first Rider making suit only appearances. To separate the current Kamen Rider from the rest of the gang, he would be dubbed Sky Rider due to his ability to fly. As for who Sky Rider is, Sky Rider's civilian identity is Hiroshi Tsukuba, a fun loving young guy who's always looking out for his fellow man. Throughout the show, especially in the first half, he's always seen trying to help or work with the victims caught up in the Monster of the Week scheme to help thwart it. On paper, he seems like a pretty stock Showa Kamen Rider without any eccentric defining traits like Stronger or Amazon, but where Hiroshi, and for that matter the entire show stands out, is in the flavor text. For example, there's a brilliant moment in the first episode after Hiroshi transforms where he looks at his reflection in the puddle, holds a rock, crushes it, and realizes the weight of his newfound power as a cyborg. Again, on paper, this and helping out children are pretty standard for this kind of Kamen Rider, but the way it's all presented in the show is so polished and earnest, it makes Sky Rider, both as a character and show, very endearing. This endearment is expanded as Hiroshi acts as a charming older brother figure to not only the characters in the show, but to those watching it. You see, at the end of episodes after the end credits song, they started recording unique footage of Hiroshi giving wholesome advice to the audience audience before he introduces next week's episode, which is such a small but lovely detail that further endears me to his character and makes him one of my favorite Showa writers. Some may view these details I've just described as superfluous fluff that doesn't matter to the actual plot or character arcs, but I think texture like this is important as it makes the show have a unique identity from its contemporaries and provides more entertainment value while watching. When it comes to the other common writers who show up in Skyrider, they're delightful as usual, though I will admit at certain points they do kind of hijack the show with how much of the back half or lies on their appearances, which might make those episodes alienating to new viewers who haven't seen any of the past Kamen Rider shows, but as someone who has been watching all of Showa era Kamen Rider in order, it's just nice to have these characters remember, teach Skyrider some tips, and see their battle of justice continue. It's rewarding for returning fans, and encourages new fans of the show to check out the past ones. However, my favorite addition in the back half of Skyrider isn't the returning writers, but the comic relief character of Gan Ganji. He's not a cyborg, he's not even a proper Kamen Rider, he's just a funny guy in a cool suit who tries to stand up against the Neo Shocker forces. And he comically fails anytime he tries. His antics are quite enjoyable and provide more life to the show, but while he's mostly fun in games, he does have his little moments of pathos here and there. He wants to be this grand hero like the Kamen Riders, but is always flopping on his face, yet he's constantly determined to help others despite his constant failure. Yeah, Gan Gan Ji is ultimately a joke character, but he's not only an entertainer, one, he's a great, if not slightly tragic showcase of the impact the legacy of the Kamen Riders has had on the average people of the world. Going from one of the most memorable elements of Skyrider to one of the most forgettable, Neo Shocker are pretty basic Showa era villains compared to past series baddies, which makes sense as the show was supposed to be a back to basics reboot initially before the second half. The only interesting take I have on these guys is that I wish General Monster stuck around for longer since he was the most entertaining villain of them all. To give a slight positive to Neo Shocker, they do have some good monster designs. Overall, while Skyrider may be basic to a fault for some, the charming and comedic moments in between the action set pieces make this one of my favorite Kamen Rider series, and is currently my favorite Showa era show. That last part might change when I get to the last two shows, but either way, Skyrider will always hold a special place in my heart. Fly on, Kamen Rider. Fly on.